Listen at your own risk. To not on the payroll right here at 107.3 FM KJAS here out of Jasper, Texas. Uh, if you uh, if you want to jump in with us tonight, feel more than free. I'm your host Jay Sharp, and I'm sitting here with my co-host Kerry Thomas. Hey man, what do you know? Man, it's been a cold week. Yeah, you you uh, sitting around uh, like I am waiting for the uh, decline and fall of the American Empire. Oh man, it looks like it's getting worse. <laughs> it's it's bad. I'm gonna write. I'm wondering who's gonna write the history of it. I wonder, you know, a thousand years from now, who we're gonna be able to read a history on it? Elon or Musk, just and Zuckerberg. One. Well, a thousand years, they won't be with us, I assume. Uh, and then you again, never you, know. Never know. you never yeah, know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, they will be in the metaverse somewhere. Yeah. yeah, you never know. If you're just tuning in, we appreciate you for. Uh, for checking in on us tonight, we're here with you every Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, you can call us up at 384-2626, 409-384-2626. Got a lot that's happened, a lot that's been happening. If you are not, um, if you haven't been over to the website, go check the website out, notonthepayroll.com. We've got a bunch of interesting little interviews there for you. Uh, we've got a number of guys in the community who's running for uh, running for different positions, and we have taken some time to sit down with them and communicate and try to help them get their word out. If uh, you haven't been over to our Facebook page, go to Not On The Payroll uh, on Facebook, and you can like or follow or whatever you can do with that page. I don't know what, what, what you actually do with that page. Well, you can look and see how handsome we are. Oh, that, yeah, and I think we're actually <laughs> we're, we're attempting a live, uh, live Facebook tonight. So um, anyway, but neither here nor there, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, you can uh, you can give us a call three eight four twenty six. You better not throw it open. Those complaints we might get them. Well, we've had them before. I know it. I'm well aware of that. We've had those before. I'm well aware of that. So what's been going on, man? Man, not much. Well, like I says, I uh, I'm to the point where I'm uh, watching about eight hours of Bloomberg every day and uh, watching my uh, crypto uh, just absolutely man, tank. Wouldn't you like to be a professional <laughs> a professional football player? Who uh, who took their pay in, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in in Bitcoin? Hey guys, here, here's the deal. Just go ahead and give me everything in Bitcoin, <laughs> and then two days later it tanks. It tanks, yeah. I mean, thirty something thousand didn't it drop off there? Uh, more than that. Okay. We're talk we're talking yeah we're talking close to forty. Close to forty. Yeah, close to forty. I think is what it was. Yeah, dude, that's insane. That is insane. Um, hey, we want to tell you about our sponsor. We currently have one sponsor with us who's uh, backing the First Amendment and backing uh, the Second Amendment because we do talk a lot and yeah. we do carry weapons. So, uh, I mean, yeah, well, yeah. But, uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> we, do, uh, we do want to send a shout-out to Stuart Glass. If you have any glass needs whatsoever in your vehicle or your home, they are the ones to uh, hook up with right here in Jasper. Touch base with them. Uh, that's Stuart Glass right here in Jasper. Matter of fact, you can go over to the website. We've got a we got a link for them where you can actually communicate directly with them. Um, anyway, so having said all that, you are listening to Not on the Payroll, and uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of dig into it here. So, what's uh, on the agenda tonight, Jay? Man, well, not um, Neil Young. See ya. <laughs> Spotify spoke up and said, uh, yeah, I think Joe they were, Rogan's they, a they little were, more relevant. They were talking about uh, in the last year, uh, Cinnamon Girl got a million hits, and in the last week, Joe Rogan got 11 million hits. <laughs> so, you know, it's a big difference yeah. there. Yeah. Well, and what's crazy is this. I, I think that speaks to a certain I don't know. I mean, I don't know Neil Young. Me and him have never sat down and drank a beer together. But uh, you know, I don't know if this if this is uh, he wasn't something. any he wasn't any good when he was solo. He wasn't any good when he was with Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Okay, he, and he's not any good today. I got you. Uh, okay. So this now, is now there, there'll be some Neil Young people, you know, calling so, in now. But so you know. this is what happens when when no talent and no skill level just sells their soul. To the devil, I guess, and then or whoever, or whoever. Well, he's whoever. a Canadian. What do you expect? He may, may he's a Canadian. Yeah. What do you expect, yeah. man? Exactly. You know. But my thinking is, uh, 
on one hand, there's two ways to look at it. On one hand, kind of a, a guy who's trying to stand up for what he feels like is on some level of injustice from uh, from a misinformation standpoint. Right. Or is this just ego dripping out of his ears where he thinks he's actually going to make Spotify do anything as no. it pertains to Rogan? Well, here's the deal. He's trying to make himself relevant once again. You know, he hadn't had a hit in 45 years, and uh, Joe Rogan is uh, hotter than a $2 pistol, and, and yeah. they had a contract with Spotify for $100 million. Sure. And, you know, well, Neil Young would love to get in on some of yeah, that $100 million right. Dollars right. at this point, but he's yeah. not. It may have been, it may have been a, a weird ploy to try to get on the Rogan show. So, you know, I mean, who could, knows? Could be. Uh, could have been I, if, if I was Rogan, I'd ask to see if he'd come on. Honest to God, whenever I saw a picture of Neil Young, he, I, I thought he was Meatloaf. I thought it was the singer Meatloaf. And I was like, whoa, he really, hey, th- things got bad after 50 for that. I'm going to tell you what, Neil Young looks like a scarecrow, Donnie. He never did look good before, and he sure enough looks bad now. No, he looks, like he looks awful. He looks honestly I mean, like he's awful. got the COVID. I mean, he, he probably got something worse than COVID, but that's looks, another story pretty entirely. Rough, pretty rough. If you're just tuning in, this is not on the payroll where we um, we rant and rave and uh, we act like lunatics on some. Level. Sure, why not? And uh, then we, uh, <laughs> but they some, put us on the air. Why not? <laughs> sometimes we throw a fit, like uh, last like, week. last week, which I was told that it wasn't as bad as. Maybe I had felt that's what I heard from everybody. Everybody was really pleased with last week's show, and I was shocked. Yeah, me shocked. Too. I thought you know there would be some people with pitchforks and uh, yeah. torches outside when we walked out, well, but they also, were not. We've also been asked how can we listen to older shows, and the way you can do that is just go over to notonthepayroll dot com. You can check out uh, last week was Meth Heads and Mooches, I yeah. think is what we named it. Yeah, and um, but you can check that out and see if we uh, you know give us give us a little bit of. Uh, a feedback. I did run into some people who did not necessarily agree, but they couldn't remember oh. why they agreed or why they disagreed. <laughs> so, I, you know, whatever. So, neither here nor there. Friends of yours? Yeah. Maybe people, closer people, than that. People, maybe oh, closer than that. Yeah, so, that's scary. You know, but neither here nor that's there. That's scary. People yeah. I know, huh? It's nothing a little weed and alcohol won't, won't rub off. You oh, know what I mean? man. So, there's that. Oh, but, man. Matt, what is going on with the trucks? Why are all the trucks headed to auto Canada? Well, my understanding is that there is a new agreement between the United States and Canada that truckers now have to have a COVID vaccine before they can drive bet- between the two countries. And uh, as far as what's coming out of Canada, we need, I can't think of too much of anything, maybe maple syrup, maybe your know. crown royal. I, I, you know, I, I you know, I can't think of anything else I'd want from Canada. I can't, I you can't know, really I, think of anything either. You know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, you know, I, I enjoy. Norm I enjoy. Just passed away. Yeah, so, I, I mean, he. Yeah, and he. He I, wasn't a trucker. No. Um, no, I, I think he was an American citizen there at the end, wasn't he? May, may yeah. Have been, may have yeah. Been. I. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but it's almost like um, it really. If you look at every. It's almost like they've scared the hell out of us for the last two years. And now this is the offspring of that fear. And I'm not talking about the truck specifically, right. but if you look across this page that we've got outlined, I mean, we've got everything from truck, uh, truck or caravan headed to Ottawa. We've got the Federal Reserve's going to be raising interest rates in right, March. Right, right. I, I want to talk about that in a little bit. The VAC studies that's coming out. Right. You've got the, uh, you've got the uh, Ukraine you got the Ukraine situation. You've also got the lab monkeys that got out. <laughs> I laugh every time I see And the CDs. I'm sitting here going, what in the world? What is happening here? You know? So, to me... I don't know, man. I just it feels like uh, it feels like bread and circus, right? It well, feels sure, like of course. Feels, Once again, follow the American Empire, just like you know, ancient Rome. How long do you Re- really think? How, how long do you think we have? Honestly, I mean, be, I will not see it. I, I turned sixty five this year, and I will not see it, Jay. But okay. I figure in, in your lifetime, yeah. certainly in your son's lifetime, right? By the way, his son is our engineer tonight. There you go. One of our engineers tonight. That's right. Uh, in their lifetime, it'll see it. And I don't know what's going to happen to this country. Yeah. Uh, I don't, to be honest with you, I look for us to split into at least five different nations. Really? Yeah. So kind of like EU style? Yes. Okay. Definitely so. Okay. And uh, it's my, interesting my you question say that. is this my question is this, and, and is uh, what's going to happen with Social Security? What's, going, what's the Republic of Texas going to use for money? Well, how are they going to pay off the, the, their portion of the debt that the rest of the United States has built up? 
How are they going to do that? You know, I've got oil. all kinds of economic. They don't have that much oil. Texas don't have that much oil? It doesn't have that much oil. Mm. You think it does, yeah, it but it does like it not. Made. feels like it has quite a bit. Because you, you've got to remember, once it's all said and done, what's going to happen? What's How's Texas going to get a military? How's Texas going to get a Navy? Dude, I mean, yeah. all you got to do is just sign up for your local uh, your local <laughs> militia. You'll be good to go. I mean, you go to barbecues and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it, what's it, crazy it, it, is, it, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, I won't be around. I think that's a big question that I got even tonight, and we're just going to kind of meander through some of this. But yeah, how long do you think it's going? This thing is going to last? How long? How long? Fifty till years. It falls, till it Fifty falls years. Apart? You think so? Fifty years. Yeah. What's crazy is me and my and grandfather. It, yeah. Me and my grandfather who passed away last year. Right. Uh, he. He got so irate with me one time about. 10, 15 years ago, whenever I said, you know, I, I think we're headed to breaking up at some sure. point. And he is almost hopping up and <laughs> up and down saying this is the United States. But he's one of these guys who's one of these uh, Michigan workers. Mm. He was automotive. I mean, he is, he's as, if you cut him apart, he would have a flag pouring out of him. You know what I'm saying? Work for GM or um, Dodge? He, or? Worked, he worked, for, uh, he worked for Dodge. Okay. He worked for Dodge. Okay. And, um, you know. It was he was just adamant in his head that the United States will never break up. But I'll be honest with you, man. I mean, you know, once we're all in the metaverse, it almost seems right like now, that doesn't matter. Right now, we are not we're not mentally prepared. We're not ready to, break to go. Up. No. If there was held to a vote today, it would overwhelmingly seventy five percent plus would say no. We're going to stay right with the United States. Sure. But down the road, things keep getting worse. Sure. The yeah, it just economy, seems, the economy collapses, which I'm looking for it to happen at any time now. Yeah, 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 yeah I, Texas will go on its own. Now, I what's go, what's going to happen to all the, the parts of the state? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that that really concerns me, even with even with the mandates and stuff like that, is at what point are we allowed to say this is tyranny on some level? From which party? Both. From all, both. From yeah. government. From government, at what point? See, because I mean, if we're going to sit here and we're going to break down the uh, the outline of the Second Amendment, I mean, at some point you're gonna you're gonna have to really consider. And I mean, I, I know there's guys being put in jail right now for what happened on January sixth last year. Let me let me explain it this way. I'm a member of a uh, of a, of a pretty Secret radical. Group. Yeah, well, it's a pretty radical gun owners group. Okay. And uh, they literally believe that uh, you should be able to own any kind of weapon you want to. Okay. Well, the Second Amendment says you should be able to own any kind of a weapon you want to. But you get a machine gun without a license. You get a flamethrower without a license and see what happens to you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this, yeah. 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 Mr. Thomas, yeah. you, can you mind coming out here? Guys with three letters that go ATF <laughs> on you, on their shirt, you know, and they have automatic <laughs> weapons, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, to me, I, I just wonder, and I'm not even I'm not even debating what kind of weapons you should be able to have, but I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, at what point do we as a citizen have a right to step up and call this tyranny? Because, I mean, for mandates, I mean, there was never, I mean, has there ever been a mandated flu vaccine? You know, I do know if your kids go to school, they have to be vaccinated, provided there is not some sort of a religious exemption. Sure. So why do when I have the religious exemption in this situation? Because I'm listening earlier. I'm listening to some complete moron earlier on some live stream. Right. And he's sitting here talking about, you know, and he's got his mask on. He's the only one sitting in the room. And he's got his mask, mask on, on. And he's basically saying, you know, I mean, uh, if you're not, if you're out there and you're unvaccinated, you are, you are as, you're no better than a murderer. Oh, God. And I'm just thinking, yeah, this is the generation that we're raising right now. This is an older guy, younger no, guy? No, Delusional, young, 20-somethings. Well, you know what I'm 20-something, saying? 20-something. Still, but I'm sitting here going, 20-somethings are able to get away with certain things. That but those 20-somethings. Us, us 40-plus can't. Those 20-somethings are fixing to be taking over a lot of things here. And I'm sitting here going, that group will mandate everything. Let me tell you a secret. I thought the same thing when I was sitting in the sitting in the classroom looking at y'all going, oh, God, help us all. Well, look at us now. <laughs> We're right on the precipice. We're sitting right on the edge. You knew what was coming. You knew what was coming. I should have moved someplace. Oh, man. I don't know where. So, I tell, so, so break, down, break down for our listeners out here with the Federal Reserve Chairman, okay. Jerome Powell. Jay Powell. He... 
he kind of let uh, he he had a talk yesterday, and then the markets freaked out. Yeah, they freaked out about it because he basically is going to raise the federal funds rate, which is basically the interest rate okay. uh, on money. How does what, that affect us as as here's people? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Inflation is run away right now, and okay. they've got to do something about it. What inflation is, of course, and you should have learned this in economics from mm. your economics teacher, whoever I think he I'm, was. I think I missed you know, it. That, too much money chasing too few goods and products causes inflation. inflation. Okay. Exactly. I'm proud of you. you Remember that. All right. Say it again. Too much money okay. chasing too few goods and products cause inflation. So what they're going to try to do is this, is lessen the amount of money that the Federal Reserve, that's prints all the money, right. believe it or not, it's a private bank, Sure, it's not run by the U.S. government, will put into the economy, and they're going to do this by raising the interest rates. Okay. And the interest rate is going to hurt everything, buying houses, price on your Visa card, buying a new car. So if you're going to do something, you need to do it before March. Uh, I certainly would. Do it before March. I would do it. If you're going to buy a house, you're going to buy a car. If you're going to buy a boat. If I was selling something, I would do it before March, too, as quick as I could possibly could. Really? Yeah. Because it's going to make it more difficult. It's going to make it hard to do. Okay. Look, if your interest rate goes from 2% or 3% on buying a car now up to 8%, how much more money are you going to be paying for that car? Right, right, right. Yeah, and cars yeah. are cheap already. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the jump is like 50000 to 80000 I know it. It's insane. I know it. I don't know how people can afford to buy cars. Looks like we got a caller here for line one. Go ahead, caller. Yes, how you doing? I'm, I'm trying to do good, man. How are you? I'm blessed. Yes, I just have a question. I may have missed it if y'all have not already said it. But I was wondering, what was the opinion on the uh, – they took the guy off the head of the list – for the heart transplant because it refused to take the COVID test. I didn't know what was the uh, comments on it. Was it? Did you think it was right or wrong? So they took him off a list? There was a guy that was going to, I saw the the story, and I think it was on, well, I'll tell you what, it was on Sky News out of England. I'll tell you what, we'll get to your answer there, bud. I appreciate the call in. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. What the guy had done was this. He needed a heart transplant. Okay. And he did not want to uh, take the vaccine for right. whatever reason. Right, right, right. And uh, they took him off the list. In other words, because he did not have the vaccine, they took so him off the took, list. So he took him completely off, off the, the list. list. So, uh, to get so a heart transplant. So all right. So, so we kind of we have some level of differing points of view on this deal, but at the same time, what's your what what's your thought about that situation? <laughs> In this point, if you need a heart, you need a heart. Right. Give the man the heart. Sure. That's what I think. So basically, uh, okay. That, yeah, so you, yeah, you think I don't it have, have been, pro- yeah. one way or another. If you shouldn't gonna, have been if kicked off. Give, if you're going to give people medical treatment, treat it by the same. Well, my question is this. At what point does that not go against the Hippocratic Oath? <sighs> well, it would. That they take. Because, it, I mean, to it, me, I, if they take a Hippocratic Oath right. and they, they say that their their whole job is to heal and help everybody, then how are you going to throw this? How are you going to throw this politicized vaccine mandate into a situation where the man needs a heart? What their problem I think it's was? Garbage. What the problem was that the uh, the hospital thought was this is because of he would take all this medication sure. to, for rejection of the heart, right? It would lower his resistance, and he would be more uh, susceptible. Susceptible, thank you, to COVID for getting COVID exactly. Okay, and uh, that was the big deal they had about it. Now, other than that, I'm sitting there going, "The man needs a heart. Give the man a heart." I think it's splitting hairs, and to be honest with you, if the man would have had more money, he would have probably went, stayed in the front of the line. Well, he would have went to India and got well, one. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I think that's. Uh, I think this whole thing has been over politicized. What's what's um, what's crazy is is that it all, everybody's in some level of fear of being able or, of saying anything of speaking up. It's it's like it went from it went from uh, uh, Weinstein and the Me Too movement and Bill Cosby and that right. whole deal, and right. now we've shifted all the way over here to this other side to where okay, now we're policing each other. If you're not wearing your mask and all this stuff, and we've talked about this before, but it's even moving moving beyond that. On some level, it seems like it's a little bit more relaxing in the rural areas. But I'll be honest, you go into some of these places, man, some of these towns, I mean, they're eat up with stupid seven ways to Sunday thinking that these but masks been, are going to But it's been anything. like this forever, people being eat up. I, I get you know, that part. You know, but, it's been but like that being, forever. But being in a situation where 
I taught in a, a town northwest of Houston that was eat up with uh, seven kinds of stupid. But that's you, another story if entirely. We're, if we're sitting here looking at the situation now, it's almost like the it's it's almost like Twitter and all these different engagements and and being online, being in social media, and all these things has almost dropped some of some of people's. Um, it's almost dropped like. Maybe their honor or respect for just people as a whole. All right. Does that make sense? And I mean, it seems to me, it. I don't know. It just seems like there's, there's just a lot of uh, posturing. There's a lot of posturing going well, on, and, and it's now because it is twenty four seven. It's like the news cycle back in the day. I mean, you can listen to the to the news cycle at six o'clock. Be in, check the news. Now yeah. it's twenty four hours. I mean, we knew there were stupid people out here. We knew there was ignorance out here, but now it's on every corner. It's like this is the the stupid has procreated at such a rapid right. speed. Sanity is almost like it's dripping to a halt. Part of the deal also is this: the American people are tired. We're tired of COVID. We're getting tired of woke people. We're getting tired of all this other stuff involved with what is going on right now. Sure. And I see a big pushback right now. Yeah. Two years, enough is enough is yeah. enough. If if somehow or another they saw a light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. they kept telling all oh, the light here will be in three months, yeah. four months, five months. Well, we're two we thought years this was going to be two, two months. Yeah. We thought this thing would be over by, yeah. by summer. But I think I remember somebody saying, this will be over by the summer who of 2020. Know, you know, when's this going to end? Yeah. Maybe it's never going to end. I don't know. You know. At some point, it's got to end. I don't know. So specific to the uh, go, touching back on this uh, on this Federal Reserve situation. Yes, so if anybody's going to go out there and they're going to be doing any purchasing, you need to get it done before the rates go up. I would. Or if you're going to be selling anything, you need to get out there and sell it before I the would. rates go up. Which is encouraging to me because I need to sell an RV right now. So I yeah. guess I'll you better get rid of some stuff. Yeah, so yeah. your uh, Bitcoin and uh, uh, your Ethereum and uh, your BNB and uh, fortunately, your, I, I, all your I can coin. afford is Dogecoin. Doge coin. That's all Doge I can. Coin. That's your all Doge, I can. Or as I call it, doggy <laughs> coin. <laughs> that's all I can afford. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Not on the Payroll right here in Jasper, Texas. We appreciate you for tuning in. Give us a call if you want to jump in here with us. If you got questions, comments, concerns, or complaints. You can call us at 409-384-2626. We promise we won't have an answer, but we can at least... I will lie to you. We can, we can <laughs> moan and bellyache with you as well. So you can give us a call at 384-2626. We'll so let's look at some... Have, have, you done any, uh, have you done any study on these uh, lab monkeys that got out? No, I just heard about it when I came okay. in. Okay. So here's basically what happened. This, this vehicle that was transporting lab monkeys... And I think it was in was, Pennsylvania. Was it, was, it a, was it a truck, a van? It was or? a van. It was, was like it a, a box a, box okay. van of some sort. Right. Anyway, um, they end up getting into a wreck, which seems mysterious. But I mean, hey, it is Pennsylvania. What you know, you never know. You ever been happened. on the turnpike? It's, it's it's something else. It is crazy. Yeah. Um, so these lab monkeys. First of all, the driver didn't know he was carrying lab monkeys. Right. Yeah, he, 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 that, claimed, he claimed he was carrying cats. That's flag number one. Claimed flag he was no, carrying yeah, cats. Yeah. Flag number one, the, the young man didn't know he was carrying monkeys. All right. All right. And on top of that, he didn't know that they were like uh, study monkeys, right? And, and I, from what I understand, uh, a lady came up to him, asked him, said, hey, we've got um, – uh, you know what? What do you what do you got here? What are you carrying? Yeah. And he said, "I think we're I'm carrying cats." So she goes to the back. <laughs> well, it wasn't cats; it was monkeys. So long and short of it, uh, three of these monkeys got out. All right. So three, that we know of three monkeys got out. What they're that's what that's they're what officially they're saying. saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, maybe monkeys are loose everywhere is in Pennsylvania. The CDC shows up. Says we're going to keep these monkeys under observation. Ends up finding the ones that got loose, and Shot them, killed them. Well, maybe maybe they just hugged they them. They put them down. They looks put like them down. They put like them down. Put them down. Yeah. All right. Looks like we got us another caller. Okay. Here. Go ahead, caller. Caller, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess they hung up. Got mad and hung up. That's all right. Hey, call us back, 384-2626, 384-2626, and we will get you here on the air. No, we were talking about these lab monkeys, but so the CDC gets involved. I don't know if you're, if you're, you know, I mean, it's like I told somebody the other day. I'm not a good artist, but I'm a hell of a dot-to-dot guy. 
we're, what is going on with the CDC? CDC shows up, puts the three, puts the three monkeys down, and here we go. What what is happening? And, and tell the people that uh, that were exposed to the monkeys, uh, watch for any virus symptoms. What? Yeah, what? Which any flu like symptoms? Which one? Yeah, which virus? Yeah, vomiting. All right, let's try nose, this. Nose let's, running. What? I have no idea. Go ahead, caller. Hey, good evening. How are you, man? Man, we're trying to do good. Yes, sir. So I'm curious, how long do we put up with this and not stand up for our civil liberties before we are considered an extremist? Manny, you know, we were just actually having that conversation because, I mean, it almost seems like the guys who stood up in, uh, stood up on January 6th. Now, I mean, you can look at all the conspiracy theories, but if you just look at that on its nose and say, okay, these guys stood up and they wanted to at least um, protest what was going on, I mean, you've got these people going to jail, so it's almost like they're sending a signal or a sign to us out here who are uh, hardworking folk. <laughs> They're, they're telling they're us what's going to happen. To no end for standing up for what they believe is right on a peaceful protest. Nobody was hurt. I agree. I agree. But I think what's happening, I think the government is using that to say, hey, listen, if there's going to be an uprising, this is how we're going to handle you. So, I mean, to be honest with you, man. I agree 100%, but how do we stand up for our civil liberties then? These are God-given rights that we should stand up for. I agree. I agree. And, and to be honest with you, I think that's some of the frustration that I feel is that at what point do you start calling it what it is? Exactly. Yep. We are on the same page 100%. Well, man, I tell you what, keep that number because if you come up with an idea, let me know because we, <laughs> we might get in the mix with you. You and me both, I'll be listening, waiting for the flag. All right, brother. Appreciate it. Right. Yeah. yeah, man, I, was, I think that's a big deal for a lot of people out here. There are a lot of unhappy people, but the question is this. How much of creature comforts are people going to be willing to give up if if we go into a full board civil war? What is going to happen then? You have to give up your Internet. You have to give up your electricity. You have sure. to give up your air conditioning in July. Sure. sure. What is going to happen then? Yeah. What is going to happen if you have to send your 18-year-old to war? Yeah. And he comes back or she comes back in a body bag. How much are we willing to put up with? I think this, man. To me, it is really um, the, the only way I can see to even begin to step toward um, what I would say would be a profitable place in this climate is – to start making your small stands. I mean, I, I can see I see the January 6th thing, and I say, okay, I, I understand that, and there may be time for that in the future. Right. Okay, there may be an uprising, maybe, maybe uh, on the on the brink. Right. At the same time, what can we do here on a local level? What can we do around each other on a local level to? Give each other our civil liberties because, I mean, here's the thing. I don't walk up to a person with a mask on and call them a, a, every a word moron. You, every, every word you can. That's exactly right. I, 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 don't, I don't sit there and scowl at them All right. when they're inside the six-foot zone. All right. I don't, you know, and so I think if we can back up a little bit and instead of having the conversation as much about maybe revolt and, and rising up, I think on just a real human level, if we can back up and have some decorum with each other, All right. instead of you looking down on me through, you know, through these masks in the process of me just trying to feed my family and take care of my daily, here, daily deal. Here is what we have come to. We're to the point where we just want to hate somebody. I and think I, that's and true. I, and I don't get it, and I don't understand why. Yeah, you don't see eye to eye with this person politically, but why do you hate them? Sure. Why do you hate them? Because they're not going to change. And it's to the point that side over there that hates you hate also hates you. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's, you know, exactly. it's, it's a yin and yang deal going on but here. But here's what's nuts. So now if you follow, if you, if you follow how we got here. Right. Never before until social media came along were we in what's referred to as echo chambers of our own ideas. Pretty much. 
And so now what's happening is, plus you have algorithms that are helping doctor you and keep you incensed and keep you hacked off at the other side, whoever the other side is. And so we're following these algorithms. You know, I had a, I had a professor tell me one time, which don't get me wrong here. You know, me saying I had a professor one time just meant I went to, I went, I had a couple six weeks in, in, uh, at Lamar, but he pulls me aside. He said, he said, Jay, he said, what, what class, was this a poli sci class? Uh, sociology of some, okay, sort, okay. some, some sort of deal. Okay. He said, he said, one of the things you got to remember is this. If something is free, if something is free, sure. you are the product. Could be. You are the Could product. Be. Could be. Because the thing is this, you know. If, if it's you, free, yeah. If you think about it now. We received Facebook like it was God's gift for all of us to well, be able to communicate. It. Instagram, everything. Everything. Yeah. I, and when I say Facebook, I use that yeah, loosely I, uh, as socials. That, that, right? Yeah. So if you look at this, and then now we're all plugging in all this information, and we're we're on, they're watching us everywhere we're going. I mean, sure. you know, sure. We're you, living. You, you big carrying brother. a phone? You yeah. carrying a phone? They know where you are. So if we're sitting here looking at this thing, I think what's happened is because I go on and say I like this this site or that site, and then the algorithm starts processing this deal, and studies all show that if you're more enraged online, you'll stay on longer. Sure. Which. It's hysterical to sure. me because a lot of times all we've and got to do— And how can that be good for you? All, yeah, exactly. How can that be good for you? Exactly. So all, all we've got to do is adjust how we're handling some of our social media. You know, I remember yeah. the old preacher saying, turn it off the one-eyed monster right? yeah. back in the day. Yeah, the idiot the, box. The, the, yeah, the, the idiot, idiot box. box, yeah. But it's really that's what we're carrying in our hands right now. Sure, that's that's what sure. that's what incenses us a lot. Sure. But I think and it, that, it, it blows it, me. It's at sixty five. It blows my mind that we've got one of these. Yeah, and and once again, I'm to the point. Hey, where is my phone at? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah, I, I spend more time a, on it than I care to think about. I think there's actually a disorder for that, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. But no, I think this. I think there's going to come a very real, in the next 50 years, you said 50 years. Yeah, 50 and I, years. I would say that's probably accurate. Yeah. There's going to come a very real point where we're going to have to make some decisions as individuals and states. I, I, honestly, I, I would love to see states take back their rights in a real, uh, a real and defiant way. The problem is this. As I said, what level will you go to? What level will you so go I guess, to? Uh, so, and it's to the point. Right. And it's to the point now. You know, what level will you go to? Will you will, it, will you live like you're after a hurricane, not for six weeks, right? But for years, sure. Yeah, for years. And there's no government coming in with MREs and water. Right, right, right. Are you willing to live that way for five, six, ten years? Yeah. Would you? I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'm okay. not going to live through it. So let's just say I'm not going to live. Through let's it. just say the next ten years. Say it happens in the next ten years. And once again, ten years, I'd be seventy-five. I doubt I'm here too. I think that's just dismissive. <laughs> what would you do? It depends on the circumstance I went through. I'd have to see what was going on. If we were fixing to have something like Red China, yeah, what the heck? Let's go. Okay. Do you think it's where we're headed? I mean, because I the, Biden, it, the Bidens think, and the Chinese seem to be kind of, I mean, they seem to be tight. I, mean, you have to be, some I have to be careful with the Chinese here. No, uh, I understand yeah. that. I understand that. Uh, but at the same let's, time. Let's, let's call it Cuba. Is, let let's me, call it Cuba. All right, but let me ask you this, yeah. though. Is your, is your uh, daughter-in-law, is she communist? She is not. She's not. She was claimed that she is, but she's the biggest capitalist I know. Okay. Well, I mean, bigger than you and I as sure. far as capitalism. Sure. I mean, she loves money. So, to, but to, but my thinking is this: if it, if we're looking down the barrel of Red China or right. Soviet Union or something along those line, those levels, right? You know, I mean, you. So you'd pull the plug. You'd be like, okay, I'll be Let's the first. Go. I'll yeah, be the sure, first one to go not? off go off the grid. Sure. Why not? Okay. Sure. Why not? Yeah. At some me, point, I may have to. I don't want to. Yeah. At some point, I may have to. Yeah, I, to me, I I just say I rip the band. I may be off. dead. I may be rip dead the, within six months. Rip the band aid <laughs> off and let's do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, rip the band aid off. I mean, because to I me, don't th- I don't think you know how ugly it'll be. I think I do know how no, ugly it'll be because I mean, I've I've been saying for years, and you can ask him in there. I, by the end of the week, we'll have zombies in the street eating each other. Yeah, That's it'll, be that, it'll be that bad. When they shut off the electricity and they shut off those food stamp cards and those welfare checks and the whole nine yards and all that stuff goes away, they're going to be eating each other. And I say just, they because just, I don't know who just, they are. Just, just, just remind me. Just let me remind you something. If this happens, you need to be prepared 
weapon wise. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But I mean, here's the thing. I mean, it's, this is going to be like playing one of those. You're not listening to me. This you need to be prepared weapon wise. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's my rebuttal to that. Okay. I've only got two hands. And there's a whole lot more of them coming after me. Then I'm not need, saying don't be prepared. Get, then get a bigger gun. I'm not saying <laughs> get more ammunition. I'm not saying don't be prepared. But what I'm saying is, I mean, if you look at this thing, it's going to be such a drove of people. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, honest to God, they'll be killing each other in the streets. Yeah. And I am. And, and us being out me, in semi-rural areas, we're going to miss some of it. But That's it's exactly going to get to right. it. But it's going to get to us. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe some of these. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of these smaller towns and communities will break back into community like they do after the hurricanes. Maybe there's mm-hmm. maybe there's an edge of that. Because honest to God, I'll be, I can see that. Actually, I'll be honest I with you. These rural yeah. communities have have some of that old thread. I can see and, that. You know, we may hate each other on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but Wednesday night we're going to church together. And on Sunday we're going to church together. You know that type of deal. So I mean, you know, we know how to play the game when the play, game needs to be played. <laughs> you know, but we can also make up the drama if we need to make yeah. up the drama too. True. So I don't know, man. I, I think this. So are you are you re- and you're ready to go? Pull off the band aid today. I would say this. Give me till March. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, man, because I mean it really boils down to just a few things. Water, food source, and protection. That's yeah. it. Water, food source, and protection. Now, that is a very, very, very scaled down uh, minuscule list for the actual preppers around these parts. But at the same time, at the same time, you I mean, the idea of of actually storing up food and stuff like that, that's not that's not irrational. It's not irrational at this point. You better get some uh, better get some precious metals too while you're at it. I tell you, we better. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things to look at in this deal. But I think, I think going back to what the guy was asking is, when do we stand up? Um, unfortunately, you know, I read let me a book. Ask, let me ask you this question, and this is unpopular because people are unhappy about it. How many people voted in the last school board election? How many people will vote for county commissioner coming up here? Is it going to be 25% or less? I think that is a great question because, to be honest with you, it almost seems like there is a, there's a lot of people who jump up and down. They'll gripe and belly, belly ache. They will, they will moan. They will they'll just talk all kind of noise. They get on social media, and they do the same thing. And what's nuts is you go – I heard, I heard a I heard a situation this week where a guy was being encouraged to run – for something years right. ago, right? Okay, he went and actually purchased the list of voting uh, people who voted in the community, and the people who were instigating him to vote didn't vote. <laughs> didn't vote on the list. They didn't even vote. Jay, in the last school board election, I voted in the percentage of people who voted who were registered voters seven percent. That's in the last school board election. So let's put a number to yeah. that. Yeah, that means ninety three percent of the registered voters. Didn't vote. Look, 50% of the Americans don't vote for president. Who can vote? Sure. Because they look at it and go, eh. Uh, eh. It's all good. You know? Yeah, I don't I don't understand that. I mean, to me, you know, used to, they used to say, don't talk if you're not willing to go vote. Yeah. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about any of this unless you're willing to vote. But they all claim vote. that they do vote. But they hadn't, but voted, a- they hadn't voted since 1952. Exactly. You know, the last person they voted for was Truman in fifty and forty eight. You know, that actually that actually kind of brings us to to some of these local these local elections because we've got a few local elections here in Jasper and Newton County. If you want to chime in with us, hey, what is going on in Newton County? I don't know. I don't live there. What you're you're a Newton County in, resident. What is going? Yeah, but I'm 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 very new. What is going on in Newton County? It almost seems like there's a lot of murmuring going on about the taxes, a lot of uh, property taxes and such. Newton if, County is one of the few counties in the state of Texas that lost population. Wow! Nearly all of all, all the 254 other counties they gained, but not Newton County. Nobody's living in East Texas anymore. Everybody's moving to Austin. Wow. You know? You yeah. Know, I'm not surprised some of your kids not going to Austin. Yeah, well. You I mean, know? Hey, and if we'll they're see. not going to Austin, they're going to Dallas. We'll see what happens. I, I, I think this, uh, there's there's a lot going on in Jasper and Newton County. We've got, we've got 
a number of smaller races, but we have, and I say smaller races, and it's all, it's relative. But in precinct four down in Jasper or here in Jasper County, you got Kevin Walker Jr. and you've got Dennis Marks. You got both of those guys running. You've also got precinct two. You've got incumbent Roy Parker, who is current commissioner. These are commissioner races, and you've got Kevin Holloway, who is um, who's running against him, and. To be honest with you, man, I mean, I'm, I'm supposed to be sitting down uh, and interviewing Rory Parker come Monday night. Uh, we'll have that up on the website, not on the payroll.com. But um, I've sat down with all of these guys so far, um, minus, minus Mr. Parker, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, it's interesting to watch these guys who are community guys who throw their hat into the ring. Right. And people who come from stock. Of community minded, I mean, generations who, of who have been in Newton County for years and years and years, Jasper or Newton County, yeah. absolutely. And so, you know, so to me, I'm sitting here going, this this will be interesting. These these are two interesting races to me. Um, you know, I just I, it it boils down to this though. I mean, you get people out here who just don't go vote. They'll put a sign up and say they've done their due diligence. You know what I'm saying? But don't even put but a sign they up. Don't, but they, yeah, exactly. But they don't go vote. Yeah. And I mean, if you're out there right now and you want to chime in with us uh, as as far as these um, these races go, uh, we've also got the Newton County Judge race that's going on. You got Kenneth Weeks and you've got Ronnie Cochran. Uh, Kenneth uh, Weeks is the incumbent. You've also got uh, Sid Miller and James White. They're both uh, the incumbent is Sid Miller, but James White's running against uh, Sid for uh, Texas Agriculture. And we interviewed James. And James yeah. has some very interesting things of he th- things that he said about Sid, and uh, you may want to go to not on the payroll and see or yeah. and hear go, yeah, because go. it's 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 taped what he says about Sid, and it's very eye opening. The yeah. problem is this: is anybody listening? That's ex- that, that's the biggest issue. Plus, plus being an incumbent, yeah, being an incumbent like Sid, yeah. You 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 got some folks out there who's willing to pick up a pen and write a check. Yeah, and those checks go a long ways because they know it's going to boil down to the fact that you don't have a whole lot of people voting in the state. Yeah, and I mean even especially on especially in the primary, elect- especially in the primary, that's exactly right. And the primaries are the are, are probably some of the worst. But to me, what I'm sitting here thinking is, you know. If if you didn't if you don't vote in if you don't vote in like your uh, presidential elections and things like that, seeing the effect takes a little bit longer to get to you. Right. Not voting for a commissioner or not voting for a judge or not voting for com, uh, for ag commissioner and these types of things, right. these, especially these local elections. Heck, justice of the peace, justice of the peace, school boards. Yeah. If you're not voting there. That that vote is costing you more quicker right. than these presidential votes. It just is across the board. Yeah, and so to me, uh, it looks like. Let's see here. What is the what is the um, last day to register to vote? Is Monday. It's Monday. So get your butt in there. Go register to vote tomorrow. Uh, take all your stuff with you. Take your driver's license. Yeah. Don't drive without your driver's license. Go in there and get your... You'd be amazed at how many people drive without a driver's license. I know. <laughs> you know? I'm serious. Or suspended license or whatever the case is. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. If it's suspended... Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. What's exactly. one more charge? <laughs> so early voting starts February 14th, goes through the 25th. Here's my encouragement from an active, activist standpoint. Start small. Start on your local level and go vote. And let's let's put our vote. Be informed. Do some research. Do some research on these guys and be informed. If you if you don't like the incumbents, you've got options. If you do like the incumbents, they've vote got options. Who's running against them? Yeah. So you need to be aware that your vote absolutely counts on these local on these local elections for sure, and it's going to touch you way quicker. Way quicker because here's the thing: it's just like some of these bonds in in uh, Kirbyville when they was trying to pass a bond back in 2012 and 13, and um, they ended up in about 2014. They passed. They it. finally passed it. Yeah, and they did the whole brouhaha and the whole nine yards. Well, right. guess who's paying for it now? Yeah, 
Everybody hope, in Kirbyville. <laughs> I hope you go and see that big, huge, uh, big, huge stadium, stadium down there. I mean, it's you know because that's where hey, your hey, tax money's going. Hey, hey, hey! First things first, we got to play that football, man. That's exactly first right. First things first. Yeah. Heck with everything else. I mean, Math? you ought to at least. To me, you ought to at least produce 100 verified professionals. You know, <laughs> if we're going to do upgrades. You know, it's like the old Rocky and Bullwinkle where they were at Frostbite Falls University and they uh, fired three English professors so they could build a new football stadium and hire a new coach. And uh, one of the guys says, Well, ain't nobody here don't speak no English. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Rocky and Bullwinkle? You're kidding me. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh my hey, if you're just tuning gracious. in, if, if you're just tuning in, we've got about 15 minutes left in the show. Give my us a call, 384-2626, 384-2626. March 1st is your um, is the primary vote. And so basically, if you don't know what that means, man, what? I mean, I, I, I skipped out of most of my government and economics, and I'm at, least, I'm at least clear as to... Um, as to what that means, but yeah, the thing is this: basically, what happens? Let's break it down in a in a dumb. Uh, we won't say we won't make this for dumb people. We'll, we'll dumb it down a little bit. So, tell us how the primaries work, sir. The primaries are this: there are two major political parties in the United States of America. Of course, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. The state of Texas holds primaries to decide who's going to represent them in the general election in November. On each each on party. each side. Case in point: the Texas Land Commissioner. The Republicans now are running eight people. The Democrats are running four. Okay. Which tells me there will be at some point a runoff for that position. Now, you've got to win the primary for land commissioner so you can face the Democrat or Republican candidate in the fall. Okay. So it's a long, drawn-out process. Okay. So, like right now, so you've got you've got two guys who are running for Precinct 4. Right. you got two guys who are running for Precinct 2. Right. So both of them are running on the same ticket. Right. So it's either going to be for Precinct 4, Kevin Walker, or Dennis Marks. Exactly, because there's no Democratic person running against them. So at that point, they basically win the position by default. By default. Okay. Exactly. All right. So now, like in the in the situation with uh, Rory Parker and Kevin Holloway, uh, I think there's a Democratic candidate oh, really? that I'm trying to get in touch with. Uh, I think there's a Democratic candidate who will be running. In the precinct? Um, as in precinct two? I think so. Okay. I think so. I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get that verified. But at the same time, and if anybody knows who he is, have him contact me. Go over to the website, notonthepayroll.com. Uh, shoot us a message over at Facebook or, or whatever. Get him in contact with me. That way we can sit down and interview him and get his word out as well. Because, you know, it, we went through and, and tried to hunt down as many as we could find here exactly. pretty quickly. But I'm only one person, and there's a lot of people here. And in the Texas Ag Commissioner's race, yeah. there will be a Democratic candidate there is a, running yeah. against Yeah. Absolutely. There will be a Democratic candidate. So basically, they're going to run. Each party Each party is going to run their their suggestions, or basically the they're guys. They're their are, candidate. They're gonna, their candidate. In, they're going to run. But but what I'm saying is, and that that's going to happen in November. Yes, sir. For the primaries, you got whoever's wanting to run for that Republican ticket or whoever's running for that for Democratic, Democratic ticket. ticket. Yes, sir. And then whoever the people decide, then they go to the they go to, they the, go Super to the general Bowl. election. Okay. Right. Which will be the first Tuesday in November. First Tuesday in November. Always. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if um, – if you know somebody who's out there who is not, uh, who's actually that we haven't interviewed yet, um, hey, get them in touch with us because we'd definitely love to sit down with them. We're, I've got a couple of interviews happening this week. Um, if you've got something out there in the community, Jasper County, Newton County, even Tyler County, I don't know how far they can hear us from here, but um, I think Wood, I think Woodville's within our uh, range. Maybe so. Yeah, maybe there might so. be somebody in Woodville listening. Maybe so. Or give not. us give us a call 384-2626, 384-2626. Get out there and vote. Go register. Monday is the last day to register to vote. Uh, you know, some of you need to get your warrants cleaned up before you get get down there. Or, before you go to the courthouse, yeah. <laughs> so I understand that. Yeah. I understand those dilemmas. At the same time, get down there and vote because exactly. you're going to have to pay for it. Exactly. So looking over, uh, looking over this uh, Ukraine situation. Yes, sir. I know it's not nobody's worried about that affecting us here. Well, we've sent troops to Eastern Europe. Already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
sent them to the Baltic states, sent them to, uh, I think, Poland or Romania, one of the two places. It was just right there by the Ukraine. It almost seems like if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Here is the problem. The Germans and the Italians are about to wet themselves because all of the gas that they get comes from, we're talking about natural gas, for heating. And, of course, there's not a colder place in the world than Germany in the middle of the wintertime. comes from Russia. Guess where the pipelines are? The Ukraine. So if the Russians invade, guess what gets cut off? All of that natural gas that's going to Munich, Nuremberg, Frankfurt, Cologne, Berlin. That's insane. Yeah. And that's just a mess. I'm Those telling you. Problem. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, if the German army or the Italian army got involved if something bad happened here. But here's the deal, Jay. Right now, it is negative 37 in the Ukraine. If the Russians learned one thing from Hitler... They learned one thing from Napoleon. Don't invade anybody during the middle of the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick way to die. Yeah. Quick way to Real die. Real quick. Yeah. So, you know, if it happens, it will happen in the spring. You think we'll get involved any more so? <sighs> more so than we are? No. You don't? No. No. It's going to be NATO's. It's going to be Germany. It's going to be Europe's problem. Biden and them are really tight with Ukraine as well, aren't they? Uh, yeah, kind of sort. Kinda. Yeah, yeah. Kind of sort. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of sorry. It's kind of interesting. Isn't it? But I don't know if we're going to, for Ukraine to, I don't know. Will the American people put up with us, you know, you know, 82nd Airborne being sent in there? I have no idea. Yeah, I doubt it. I have no idea. I seriously doubt that they will, Jay. Have you, have you, uh, I, I know, I know we're circling back here. Kind yeah. Of like the. Uh, sure, why not? Kind of, yeah. We're circling, sure, why not? circling back here. They gave vaccine, us a radio show. Why not? Vaccine stuff. But yeah. I mean, have you seen some of the. Uh, have you seen some of the studies that have come out? Concerning? Concerning the vaccines. <laughs> Pfizer put out their research paper. No, I'm not, I'm not reading it because I've got so much floating through me at this point, I don't want to know. <laughs> you walked in, you were kind of glowing. This, this and, and it's kind of like this. In April, I'm supposed to be going to Israel, and I may have to have, have a uh, fourth before I go to uh, Israel. That is and it. if that case happens, well, I'll just man up and take the fourth shot and go on. Oh, man. <laughs> Good Lord. I figure at this point in time, I've got three running through my system. Well, they have a. They what's, have what's another twenty five. They have an Israeli metaverse. Why don't you just jump on that and have them walk you around everywhere Jesus walked? Is that the reason you're going? Sure. Why not? You want to do the Jesus walk? Thing? Actually, the big deal. I'm no. The big deal I want to do, and I want to see if I can get away with it. And I may not because I'm not Jewish. I want to pray at the Welling Wall. Really? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to write out a sheet of paper and see if I can stick it into the wailing wall like, you know, you do during prayers. I've yeah. got my yarmulke. I'm ready to go. That is hysterical. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey. I want to see if I can get in there, but I'm not Jewish. So, you know, here's my Hebrew. How are they going to know? How are they going to know? Supposedly, you have to say a prayer in Hebrew before you go there. But the deal is, you can claim that you're Jewish, and they'll give you a copy of it in English for to, to, uh, for you to read off. Yeah, to read off. So it's kind of like if you got it's kind of like ten cheat bucks, sheet. cheat sheet. If you got ten bucks, we got a cheat sheet for you. That type of deal. Hey, man, that's pretty cool. Sure. You going to get? Are you and your wife going to get pictures at the Wailing Wall? I don't know. But that's really the only reason you want to go. No, that's a, that's one of the big reasons. I one want of the to big go. reasons. Yeah. So what yeah. else you want to look at over there? This is this is her trip. Okay. This is her trip. Okay. She has drugged me to England enough that uh, yeah. what the heck? I got she you. gets to go. I got you. You know, my wife is more religious than I am. I'm I'm just, you know, if I get in, it'll be a technicality at this point in time. My grandfather said that everybody's sitting around. I don't know if I I'm think it's a this. technicality for everybody, but yeah, that's another story maybe entirely. So. Yeah. We were, everybody was sitting around talking about going to heaven. What What's the first thing you're going to ask God and all this stuff? And yeah, everybody's going around giving their crazy questions, you know, who killed JFK and this type of deal, you know. My granddad is just kind of sitting over there rocking back and forth in his rocking chair. And they said, they said well, Papa, what, you know. Who, what are you going? What are you going to ask the Lord when you get to heaven? And he just kept rocking. He said, "Well, when I die, if I get in, I'm not saying a word. I'm going to sneak over in a corner somewhere and I'm going to squat down, and I'm going to hope that this is real." He said, "Because I don't want them to start looking back through the paperwork and go, huh? No, we. I think we uh, we messed up on this one." So I don't, I don't know if that's exactly how it works, but I mean to be honest with you, it's so so so, so, so so if you make it, if you make it, yeah. what's the first question you're going to ask? First question I'm going to honestly, this is no joke. I kind of feel the same way my granddad does. I kind of feel the same way because I mean, you know, 
I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I believe in in heaven like everybody else does. And I think there's probably more on this other side than we are, are really and, and you've, understand. And you've you've had a change in in this belief, haven't you? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's dramatically changed, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's changed uh, since uh, since the first show. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, for what me, happened? Can I ask what happened? Um, I think sometimes, I think sometimes there's. Um, do we have a caller? Okay. I think sometimes there is. Um, you go through you go through hardship, or you go through something that really shifts your worldview. Right. And um, um, pain has a way of doing that. Right. Um, and I feel like for me. Um, I, there's so much that I question from what I was raised in, right? From a religious standpoint, right? That if I'm questioning all of this that I can see, why would I not question what I can't see? Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so for me, I think so. So is so it is so it is. It, is it kind of a faith deal? Your faith has changed as such. I think I think my faith has really changed okay. a lot. I think. Um, um, I think for me, it's more of a. I don't like dogma, and dogma to me never ends up positive. I uh, I think it it never has. It I think never it, has. I think it's, it's, it's only positive for those who succumb to the dictator who's who, who perpetuates it. That, that's why I, 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 when I left the seminary, I'm not a minister. Okay, because I'm sitting there going, I'm looking at what's going on here with 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 the sure. entire denomination, the yeah. dogma. All of it. I'm sitting there going, you know, I can't live like this. I also, the other thing for me is, I have a hard time whenever we, whenever I, whenever I ask legitimate questions of those who are supposed to be in leadership, and they either do not have, they don't the, have an answer, do they? Well, it's not just an answer. They don't have the uh, the temperament to be able to engage in such a conversation a lot of times, uh, because then you know, through the years, you know. I have been, um, I have maybe been a little bit more, uh, what would you call it, uh, poking the bear type of thing, and that, and that type of. I mean, and and not but you not were poking to, it in high school, but not to just be poking the bear. Right. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, what you know, well, if if I can add up A, B, and C, right? Obviously, D, E, and F is is going to kind of is. This the two plus two is equal in four to me, and these guys are saying it's not. So to me, I think my faith has changed. As a matter of fact, what we may want to do is let's do an entire show next week on religion. Sure, about just sure. about where we're at. Because to sure. be honest with you, I, I haven't been in church since uh, since 2012, 2013, 14, somewhere in there. I mean, it's just it hasn't been a part of my life. The last time I was in church, I was in Dublin, Ireland. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And that's yeah. And and I used to, you know, you, when I was a kid growing up, well you did too. You were a PK. Sure. You know, you grew up in the church. Yeah, absolutely. And but, I think you know, it, as far as it's concerned, yeah, next week let's do a uh, religion. Yeah. Show. We'll I run think it. So. We'll do a religious show next week and uh I say religious. We got somebody on line 1, so let's let's yeah. rock the one line 1. Go ahead, caller. Hey, how y'all doing, man? Once again, I really appreciate the conversation that y'all are having. I love having a discussion with you guys, but religion is not necessarily faith. I so agree with that. If you have a hand touch from God, then you know that there is a Savior amongst all of us, and that there's a faith that we got to have to know that there's something greater. It yeah. helps us to explain things that are going on nowadays. What's wrong will be right. Yeah. And it makes no sense to any of us until you actually have that faith that know and then there is a savior to come back. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, so next week we're gonna devote the whole time to more of a religious topic, uh, and just talk about faith maybe. You know? So I'm, I'm up for it. it. Yeah, I'm up for it too, because I mean I think this, I think it's a can of worms with me and uh and to be honest with you, I, I've got no problem being somewhat vulnerable and correctable. So, uh, but nonetheless, hey, we appreciate you giving us a call back, man. Yes, sir. I look forward to it next week. We'll yes, talk sir. To you then. Sounds good, man. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, you are listening to Not on the Payroll right here at 107.3 FM KJAS. Check us out online. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. You can tune in. You can call in. You can tune in and call in every Thursday night. 
every Thursday night starting at 7 o'clock. Next week, get ready. We're going to talk religion. We're going to talk faith. We're going to talk where we're currently at with our uh, with our belief structures and ideas. And, you know, um, we encourage you to give us a call. Check, with, check back in with us next week, but check us out online at notonthepayroll.com. We appreciate you for tuning in. Mind how you go. Stuart Glass and its staff has over 68 years combined experience in the glass industry. So when you're trying to decide which glass company you want to use, ask yourself, which glass company has been here over 35 years? Stuart Glass, which glass company will be here when I need warranty work on previous work? Stuart Glass, which glass company has sufficient inventory to meet my immediate needs? Stuart Glass, when it comes to a professional glass company, the name Stuart Glass will always make a clear difference in your selection of a professional glass shop located on Highway 190 in Jasper. You've been listening to Not on the Payroll, an interactive radio program devoted to those who have not compromised the truth for money. Check us out online at notonthepayroll.com or on Facebook. Tune in to Not on the Payroll every Thursday night at 7 p.m. with your hosts, Jay Sharp and Kerry Thomas. You're listening to KJAS Jasper, also KFAH Pineland.